Ustad, good afternoon. So let me log into the V Center first. Okay, so administrator. What happened? <laughs> browser cookie bugs let's see so we have lab is up and running now sorry for delay yeah let's start So what we discussed yesterday, any any questions or anything you want me to repeat on yesterday's one? This this is what we tested, right? How we, we added extra kernel ports and we tested something. Also, we have configured all the three hosts with the same same set of port groups and VLANs and stuff. And I've told you if there is any new requirement that came in to add a new VLAN or update the existing VLAN within the virtual infrastructure area. And you log into each ESXi and create or manipulate or manage the uh, specific port group or a VLAN or that needs to be updated. So you have to spend so much of time on each host in order to update them manually, right? That is one disadvantage. So how to overcome this? I said there is a concept called vSphere distributed switch. Okay, so the distributed switch will be used to manage your virtual infrastructure networking or L2 networking uh, on a centralized manner. Uh, in the sense, at vCenter level, you manage the networking part and you no need to worry about on each host, how you configure it, how you manage it, how you update it. Getting my point? Okay, so means let me explain you in a different way. So I have one ESXA host. It has four cables, right? So what I did, I have created a kernel port. I have created a port groups on a two different virtual switches called vSphere standard switch. And I've created manual port groups on each switch. I have another one. Okay. Same configuration, right? You have to create a port groups and it will start communicating like this. Another host, nothing, no change. Same configuration. Understood? This is what we are doing, or this is what we did yesterday as well. Right? We learn 10, 20, 40, and we learn 10, 20, 40, and we learn 10, 20, 40, and so on. This is what the existing 
infrastructure is now the problem is if a customer is has a customer has requested one of the change so you need to perform a change on this you need to perform a change on this you need to perform a change on this and so on if you have a n number of hosts what is that n number if you are a small company at least a 50 host mid range at 200 or 250 odd esxa host enterprise level around 1000 host right are you going to perform this may same manual task on each host go to a go to uh, each host click on networking and go to vSphere standard switch select the port group edit change the vlan or select the add networking add a new vlan which customer has requested are you going to do this step again and again on each host and one more problem is if you if you by mistakely change the a letter cases lowercase to uppercase uppercase to lowercase or spaces in between or somewhere then it will treat as a separate port group it will not treat as a same port group right that is what that is also we tested yesterday remember yeah vlan vlan 20 i created in small small letters and vlan 20 i created in uppercase Right, lowercase and uppercase both, and it is showing as a two different VLANs, right? Two different VLAN out output groups, right? So that that is the yes. another challenge. And if your production server is up and running, uh, sorry, production environment is up and running, which which is running with around thousand VMs, around thousand VMs are running in vCenter. So if there is any problem, how you will troubleshoot it? Troubleshooting a network is like nightmare. Because you you need to understand what's going on on the physical level, what's going on on the virtual level as well. L2 and L3 level, you have to troubleshoot at both the levels. Then only you, then only you can identify whether it is a ESXA problem or whether whether it is a switch problem. Right or wrong? Right. So in order to avoid such kind of such kind of management overhead or such kind of uh, issues within the VMware. So there is a concept called vSphere there's a concept called vSphere distributed switch. What it does? VMware vSphere distributed switch. Let's see what they say. vSphere distributed switch provides a centralized interface from which you can configure, monitor, administer virtual machine access switching for the entire data center. Entire data center. Okay. Simplified virtual machine network configuration, enhanced network monitoring and troubleshooting capabilities, support of advanced vSphere networking features. Okay. So again, they will allow it a little bit, and I'm not I'm not interested in these paragraphs. Only only I want to see distributed virtual port groups, uplinks, private VLANs, network view motion, and bidirectional traffic shaping, and so on. A couple of other additional features are there. Fine. Okay, these are all comes under technical aspects uh, or selling selling features. If they want to sell it. They, they have to show some different difference between a standard and distributor, right? So let's consider those additional features as a selling features. Now, what is the basic requirement to get the vSphere distributed switch in your environment? The basic requirement is you need to have Understood? If you want to use vSphere distributed switch, you should have enterprise license, enterprise plus license. Okay, so before we go into the distributed switch, let's understand a little bit about 
licenses okay so let me go to vcenter manage your licenses okay so one license is there from where i got it and okay let me remove it now add a license you can add a license here that will automatically sync it now minimize this one v center system how many host three host how many clusters it will show you so any other solutions right so evolution let me go to my main host and manage licensing for enterprise plus license i got from someone so these are the few features it will support it will it will never expire and these are the features that enterprise plus supports Okay, so let's see DRS, it is there. vSphere DRS is Enterprise Plus license. And a lot of other features are there, but one of the features is vSphere DRS, Distributed Resource Scheduler, and sorry, my band. Distributed switch. Okay. DRS supports in standard as well. A standard license also DRS supports. Distributed switch is one of the enterprise plus license feature on vSAN also. If you if you have seen a vSAN somewhere. It is not there. Maybe on a V center it will show up. On the individual ESXA level, it is not showing up, but V SAN it supports two features. Okay. So in the licensing part, you need to have two types of licenses. How many types of licenses? You need to have two types of licenses. You have V center, right? You have V center. Okay, you have a vCenter and ESXA 1, 2, 3. Now, on a vCenter, on a vCenter, you require a license for vCenter. vCenter has a licensing again. How many times vCenter? License. That is what it is showing up here. If I go to vCenter, it is showing the vCenter license. Okay. Now, once you have the vCenter license, you also require individual ESXA licenses as well. Right? Two types of licenses. One is vCenter, another one is ESXA. On ESXA, again, you need to purchase based on two, two requirements. Okay. You need to purchase based on two requirements. Remember, vCenter, how many licenses, how many types of licenses available in the market, what VMware is doing. Okay, one is standard, another one is enterprise, another one is enterprise plus, another one is essential essential plus this is all i remember if there are any other platinum gold something something i really don't know but you remember these are the five licenses available in the market if you want to purchase it now example you purchased enterprise you purchased a standard at vcenter level fine now i said you need to purchase 
ESXI licenses also. Okay, now while purchasing ESXI license, you need to make sure this ESXI server has 26 CPU. This has 18. This has 32. Now, what you have to do? You have to purchase based on the number of cores. That is first thing. First thing, you need to make sure how many number of cores you have on the ESXI server. Those, those many number of cores, you need to be need to add a license. Okay. Another one is if you are uh, if you are using a standard license at your vCenter, if you are purchasing Enterprise Plus, it's of no use. So you need to make sure what kind of license that vCenter is holding and what kind of license that you have to purchase for ESXi. If you have an Enterprise Plus, you have to have Enterprise Plus here on each ESXi. Otherwise, the features won't work. Understood what I'm saying? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes. Hmm? In short, in short, you would require two types of licenses. One is ESXI license. Another one is vCenter license. And also make sure all the licenses are at same level. Same level means if you purchase a vCenter at standard, remaining ESXi host licenses also must be standard. If you purchase a vCenter with Enterprise Plus, make sure you are you have you have a request for ESXi host to purchase Enterprise Plus licenses only. Clear on this? Any any questions? Licensing part? No. Okay, fine. So imagine. Okay, imagine you have enterprise plus license anyway now in, in our test lab we don't require any licenses because all the features you can test it within 60 days without any license because evolution has all the features enabled by default okay for 60 days so imagine you have an enterprise plus license in your vcenter vSphere distributed switch will support okay fine let me understand what is this vSphere distributed switch. Now, let me build a lab in a such a way. Remember, I have one ESXi server, another ESXi server. Okay, let me clear this off. Okay, so minimum. Let me put in this notation. One ESXi server, another ESXi server, and another ESXi server. You have three ESXi servers, right? I told you earlier, you have two, two cables. One set second set third set you're getting my point right six cables on each now tell me as per color notation which one we used for kernel port black one yes exactly so this we already use for kernel ports okay just to fit in the picture i've rotated them like this okay now which one we used for port groups this one right agree this I used for port groups. How many port groups that I have, boss? I have around three port groups on each. We run 10, 20, and 40. Done? And also, I have a couple of VMs which are running on it. On the first host, I have three VMs. Two Windows, one Linux. Right or wrong?
okay now these two are connected on this and this is connected on this this is how the setup is right currently my lab environment if you want to take a look we can quickly go to host and clusters three host right on a first ESXS server if I go to VMs you will see all the three are running on first host on the second host there is nothing on the third host there is nothing and if I go to first host uh, networking not like this configure switches kernel port and port groups two VMs on VLAN 10 one VM is on VLAN 20 so go back to same VLAN 20 we run 10, 2 VMs, 1 VM. Agree? Now, this is the setup I have. Everything is under, everything is under. Tell me, everything is under. 1. Host, host. No, 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 man. It is not automatically normal. I'm expecting it. It should automatically adjust. It's okay. Leave it. It is not adjusting. Let's try this one last time. Yes. Okay. Now everything is under one V center server V C S A. right okay everything is under one v center now you can how many esx hosts you can have boss and so i don't want to do the manual work i said Ma manual work means i need to create a port groups here i need to create a port groups here again i need to create a port groups here which which i already did if i have another host i have to do the same right now how to avoid using using vds what is vds distributed switch you create at distributed switch you create at v center level right vsphere distributed switch that you create at v center level what is vsphere distributed switch First of all, before I go to the vSphere distributed switch, what is this standard switch? Do we have any physical existence of this standard switch? Hmm? Hello. 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 I'm asking. Do we have any physical existence of this standard switch or is just a software? It's just a software. Alright. It's just a software which is which is saved under each ESX. Software means all some of the files, some set of files which is saved under ESX host. Now, yeah. what is this distributed switch? This distribution switch is also virtual. There is no physical existence, which is also software, which is saved under e center. E center. Okay. So normally, if you create a vSphere distributed switch, the switch configuration will be saved in v center. Remember. Okay. okay. So how to create a distributed switch? Very simple. Okay. Let's treat this as your distributed switch. What what switch contains normally? What switch contains? Port groups. Port groups, right? Yeah. So VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, VLAN 40. I said I have four VLANs. Normally three VLANs in the existing 10, 20, 40. But I have a new requirement because customer asked me to create a new one, 30 as well. Then I said I'll do I'll create a VDS. 
okay distributed switch along with the existing three ports and the new port as well okay this is vds how it will start communicating with the external world if it is if it is a switch on the left hand side you have a port groups on the right hand side it must have a physical cables right means it must connect it to some physical cables right right okay if you look at this picture if you look at this picture this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 it is every switch is using one of the physical cable to send the data out agree or disagree agree okay so similarly when you are creating a v, v, v sphere distributed switch at v center level you have to provide two uplinks or n number of uplinks that you want you call it as uplink uplink means physical cables right but v center won't contain any physical cables physical cables are connected to each ESXi host right v center is just a application which which is used to manage everything at central location okay now remember i have created a software switch and i have created a port groups i said i need two uplinks to connect means if someone want to use this someone want to use this switch please come with two uplinks that is what it means mm -hmm. okay so be on mute a lot of noise let me create a switch first let me create a switch and create a port groups and define the uplinks how to do that go to vcenter switch networking networking vcenter networking remember expand data center right click distributed switch okay even if you go to cluster right click you will not see that option in the data center you will see that option distributed switch okay so better go to network because management is very easy here okay distributed switch new distributed switch vds vspear distributed switch is the name next you want to use it for 6.5 host or a 6.7 host because why why they are saying 6.0 6.5 6.7 V center is running on 6.7 however it will support two versions two versions minus two versions plus sorry two versions minus two versions plus is not possible my bad hello 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 yeah I'm saying if you are using vCenter 6.7, your vCenter will support two versions minus, means 6.5 host also be supported in the vCenter, 6.0 host also supported in the vCenter. You understood what I'm saying? Below, below that it won't support. No, N minus two. Okay. So is there any other way like... Uh, that That will discuss in the upgrades okay this is this is don't deviate my aim is teaching a distributed switch okay okay we are not discussing about how to upgrade how to uh, check the compatibility matrix and all mm -hmm. okay don't deviate yourself so in this picture it is clearly showing two versions minus means if you want to use this distributed switch if you create with this with this option other host other host which are running on 6.5 or 6.0 they won't they won't be able to access the switch you understand what i'm saying or else i can i can, I can show you something yes yes i can i can show you something okay let me do one thing let me create with 6.7 and later next how many uplinks that you want to provide to this two I need at least minimum two cables. Okay, now 
you want to create a port groups, distributed port groups? No, I don't want to create a distributed port group. Next, finish. So switch has been created with saying, saying, how many uplinks? Two uplinks. Two uplinks. Yes, not showing anywhere how many uplinks that we provided, but whenever you are using it, it will give you. Okay, now how to add the port groups? Go to switch, monitor, nothing, configure, uplinks, yeah, number of uplinks, two. Okay, so right click, distributed port group, new distributed port group. So now I'll I'll not give VLAN 10, 20, 30 because I'm doing it a brand new, brand new way. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Web. I'm using for web, web applications. Purpose of the VLAN and VLAN ID. Okay new naming convention because the older naming convention it's hard to remember people raising a concerns because they don't understand which VLAN they have to use it which VLAN uh, they have to change it when they are doing some day-to-day -day administration okay but we cannot change that anyway because the servers are in production and machines are using it and a lot of stuff but anyway you are doing it brand new way now you are you are creating all all the new configurations right so use some standard naming convention so i'll say web vlan 10 next how many ports that you need in this vlan means how many uh, servers you are expecting in this vlan 254 maximum right because the way the vlan supports 254 and VLAN type, VLAN, VLAN ID is 10, All right? Next, finish. One port group has been created. I will create one more port group, DB or app underscore VLAN 20, application service, again, 254. VLAN 20. Anyway, one time you have to do it, man. There is no alternate options. Right? VLAN 30. Again, 254 machines. VLAN 30. VLAN 40, DMZ, VLAN 40, demilitarized zone, let's say, 254, VLAN 40. Now done with the configuration. Okay. What I did, I have created a distributed switch. And for that switch, I said two uplinks, two uplinks, and four port groups. It will not show this picture, but it is created already. Okay, it, where it where it got created in vCenter. In vCenter, what is vCenter server? This is the vCenter server. What is the IP of the vCenter server? Fifty, right? 50 hello yes 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 CSA. this is the v center server right this is the v center server 30.50 okay so now this is 51 this is 52 this is 53 
where this switch got created at the moment in 50. 50 is one of the server in 50 under I'm just giving an example. This is not the exact path. Okay. Slash USR. Even I don't know where exactly this configuration will save it, but just for your understanding purpose, lamely I'm explaining it. User VC. Okay. Where or something under this, there is a one file called VDS config. Remember, just I'm saying. Okay. Now, on the switch configuration is saved under 50. But 50 will not do anything. 50 will do just a management task. Who will use the switch? This ESXi host must use the switch. Right or wrong? Yes, use the switch. yes, yes, yes. Okay. If these hosts want to use the switch, you need to add these hosts into this switch as a member. Then only these hosts can use it. So what I will do, I will add first host as a member and see what it changes. Okay, switch, go to host, there's nothing. I selected the switch, go to host, there's nothing. Go to VMs, there is nothing. Go to networks, I have four VLANs, right? 10, 20, 30, 40. Okay. I have four VLANs and ports for each VLAN, where each VLAN, around 250 ports are there. So, 250 into 4, 1050 around. Okay. And permissions that we'll see later on. Configure, this is what we configured so far. What else we do? Okay. Summary. Nothing here. Right. Now, right click on the switch, add manage host. You want to add a host or remove host or manage a host? I want to add host. Next, add a host. I want to add first host. Fine. Next. See, it is clearly showing four cables are already used and two cables are free. So I'll select the first cable, assign first uplink to the switch. I'll select the second cable, assign second uplink to the switch. I have provided two uplinks. If you want to use VDS, come with two free uplinks. I got it. And I have assigned two uplinks. Next, you want to migrate the kernel port? No, I don't want to do any kernel port migrations. Next. And you see, you want to migrate the networking? No, I don't want to do migration. So, one host is added with two adapters. Finish. See, ESXi host one is now using distributed switch. If I go to host, you will see one host is added and you go to VMs. No VMs are running on distributed at the moment, but host is added. Okay, so now go to host ESXi01 and you see vSphere distributed switch popped up. And view settings. Oh, something strange, man. I don't know. The port groups is already created. There must be some view where it will. Uh... Okay, let's keep it aside. So there are two more switches. Two more switches. These are standard switches. Okay, minimize these two, and one distributed switch. Distributed switch, manage physical adapters, what I have to manage it is already there, okay. But uh, these port groups must show here. The port groups won't show until unless you put the VMs, I believe. They have changed. They have changed the configuration, man. It's okay. Port groups are already there. Don't worry. Okay. Four port groups, which are already there. How to change this view? Always come up with some strange. Let me ninety two. Just give me a second. Ninety two. 
68 30.50 I want to see something different. Let's let's wait. There's another view, HTML view. Was what I need. Let me show you quickly. This is discontinued version. This view is no more, no longer used. It's okay. We will use it. Production cluster. Go to ESXA host one. Configure. Okay. Switches. Let me close this. Let me close this. I don't want all these things. Let me close this. Minimize this. Yes, VDS. Right now it is showing up VDS. Right, the same thing which is visible here. Okay, what I am trying to identify assigned port groups. No topology light. So if I select a light topology, you'll see all the hidden port groups. Port groups are already there, but none of the VMs are connected to this. So that is why they are. Assigned port groups. Assigned port groups means which are already in use. Actually, you have four port groups, but none of the VMs are connected to those port groups. That is the reason why they are hidden here. But if you go to topology light, so this is how it looks like. It looks like normal switch only, right? Normal switch with some port groups, some uplinks. You got it what I'm saying? So this view is not enabled in newer version in this. There is no option to unhide it. So that's the problem. So due to that, yes, I got. Okay. So I was trying to show you this. This is another bug I can say because at least they have to show it something here. Okay. So second host, there's nothing called distributed switch. Only standard switch is there. In first host, distributed switch is there and standard switch is there. Third host. There's nothing. So what to do? Again, you have to go to networking, add switch, and go to switch. Sorry, add host. Now this time I will add all the two hosts. I hope you understand now, right? Whoever is the member of the switch, they can use the switch. Whoever is not the member of the switch, they cannot use the features. Okay, if you want to become a member of the switch, you must have two uplinks. Next, kernel ports, I don't touch man. VMs migration, there's nothing done. So now you see, if you refresh it, all the three hosts are added. See, all the three hosts were added and VMs, no, no VMs running on distributed switch, only hosts are added. Now you go back to ESXi host and see, there is a distributed switch added. There is a distributed switch added. There is a distributed switch added. Okay. Now you see the other view. VDS. Topology light. Distributed switch is added. Right. All the four port groups. Now, what I will do. There is another requirement from customer saying, can you create one more VLAN? VLAN ID is triple nine. So he's saying, can you create one more, one more port group? The ID is triple nine. Okay, boss, what to do? I'll do it. So simply go to distributed switch. Right click, new port group. Okay. So backup underscore VLAN triple nine is the new VLAN. What what customer has requested? Again, two fifty four. And what is the VLAN ID? VLAN ID is triple nine, right? You can give triple nine finish. So you created one more VLAN, or sorry, one more port group for that particular VLAN. Now you go to HTML view, simply refresh, you will see five. Backup VLAN triple nine is already populated. 
on all the host. You don't need to worry about manual creation or you don't need to worry about configuration refresh or you don't need to worry about do I need to push the configuration? Do I need to update the configuration on each host? Nothing. It will automatically replicate it. Understood? Or any confusion here? Yes, I understand. Okay. Right. So, now the question is, what will happen if my vCenter goes wrong, goes down? Because my entire switch configuration is saved under vCenter, under some unknown path. But if vCenter itself went down, what will happen to these three hosts and the switch? Distributed switch will function or a distributed switch will go away or a distributed switch will not function. What will happen? All, uh, all down. Means, means, okay, you have a big data center and you have a thousand servers and every one minute you are getting $5,000 revenue due to simple vCenter power down. You are saying you are you are ready to lose that much amount. All down means the same only, right? Practically speaking. Yes. Then, then why customers should purchase VMware? If a single server failed, means single point of failure. My all physical servers, all physical ESXC servers are up and running and they are running with 200, 200 virtual machines around 3 into 200, 600 virtual machines are running. Out of 600, one machine is down due to that all 600 machines will go down. That is what you are saying. You're getting my point? Yes, yes. Now that should not be the case. Then why why anyone anyone should purchase the VMware? Just to lose the business or just to lose the money? No, right? There must be something. Then yes, yes, yes. Okay. So what happens whenever you create a switch and now you are adding one host to the switch as a member? As a member, you are adding it, right? Okay, once you add as a member, what will happen? The switch configuration is saved somewhere here, right? I said on a 50, host number 50, somewhere here. It will be copied onto this host. So, once it is copied, there will be one hidden switch created here. That is what yeah. it is. Okay, hidden switch will be created and it has all the port groups. Okay. Understood? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, you have a three host. In all the three hosts, the switch properties will be copied. What's the time, man? 4.56 or it's a 5? 4.56. Okay. Wait for five, four more minutes. We have, we have to clap for them. Yes, yes. Okay. So, meanwhile, we will finish this off. Everyone started in my society. Okay, so what happens if this vCenter server is holding the configuration of the switch here? Whenever you add a member to the switch, the switch properties will be copied onto each host. Even though if this goes down, nothing will happen. Configuration is already here. So, using that configuration, whatever the VMs are there now, they start functioning like this. You have a virtual machines, right? You'll have virtual machines. Virtual machines can start communicating from switch or this switch, doesn't matter. They have to communicate to the external world. That is the aim. Okay. If you have a VMs, they start communicating like this. Even though if vCenter is down, no problem. One, two, three. All the three hosts are up and running. 
so there shouldn't be a, any issue for customer otherwise this will become as i said right so no customer will like the product which is offering single point of failure so keep it keep this in mind okay if v center goes down your production won't go down clear yes so people are started clapping so shall we stop here yes okay chalo i will also stop we'll catch up tomorrow tomorrow what we will do we will see how we can migrate the machines live live migration from standard to distributed that that we'll see tomorrow okay okay you have one minute okay thank you bye bye